Good morning, everyone. Oh, Sunday. Lazy Sunday, the Sabbath day. Yes. And <laughs> I want to just lay in bed or somewhere where I can just rest my knees and my hips and everything else. So <laughs> it was an interesting two days. Yeah, yard for the yard sale and everyone that came was just just definitely a couple of very memorable yes meetings so enjoy so enjoyed it talking to people and uh, did they enjoy talking to me well who knows <laughs> uh, well for everyone that was here god's love and blessings to you may he protect you it's a good give and take people got good deals yes and uh and uh, uh my daughter made uh, the family here made a little money on uh, things that weren't needed anymore weren't used anymore and many people found up uh, something that oh yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it was such a good give and take very balanced yes yeah and uh so my grandson had this little soccer goal that yeah, he, uh, they said, well, he's not using that so anymore. So they sold that. And while he was gone on a scrimmage, um, also the little uh, uh, chalkboard that he had, a little easel chalkboard, and uh, sold as well. <clears throat> and he came home and he says, where's my, my soccer goal sold? And... My chalkboard sold. And he goes, money, money? <laughs> I said, yeah, here's $5. He says, well, there was $10. And I said, you know what? There was a young father that came, and he loved it, and he had $5. And I said, that's what he he got it for. And so I see he got the $5 for that. Then he looks at his mom and says, how about the money for the sucker? So go, right? yes. The mom said, now, listen. <laughs> They made a little trade there. Well, anyway, it was fun uh, on how, uh, yes, he knows what was his and expected the money, right? But wasn't doing any of the work for it, really, when he came down to it. Uh, so fun. Well, anyway, so that was that was a funny little, uh, ugh, these children are so, they have already have such personalities, you know, all my grandchildren do. Amazing. And, uh, yep, and there was little left. Uh, there was some left, but not, not much. And uh, that's all going to be donated. Yes, yeah. No, not to Goodwill. <laughs> I have other places here. We're not a family that supports Goodwill anymore. I've uh, noticed myself and where I live, it's, I've gone up to the counter and said, I can get this brand new and cheaper at Walmart next door. Uh, why is there a price like this? And I said, you're supposed to be a secondhand store, right? And uh, yeah, it was one of those, that was the last time I've ever went to Goodwill. Yeah, we have other little uh, secondhand stores there that if one wants to go, but that was years ago, years ago. I heard it's even worse now. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, it'll be donated more to uh, uh, smaller places and places where, again, single moms and children, homeless people. This, uh, yeah. I like that better anyway. So there it is. Oh, one more thing to mention before I get started. I saw again. Ah, uh, I remember uh, one of my daughters, my third child, when she was about six, going on seven, something like that, she had a cold with a cough. And the cough just lingered. Yes, it just lingered. And all of my children were doing martial arts at that time as well. Yes, I've got two who have a black belt. <laughs> and... Um, uh, 
she would go and train and sure enough she'd have to stop because she was out of breath and that was months after she had the cold and I took her to the vet uh, to the vet <laughs> Yella. took her to the pediatrician and he says yeah she has some asthma and gave me an inhaler this that I'm going uh, no I'm not starting that on a six-year-old mm -mm, no no I, when I became a mom, I started studying up on things. I mean, I really did. I, I wanted the best for my children. I wanted to know how to take care of certain things and that properly this and that. So right away, I went and read up and I found a homeopathic remedy for the bronchioles, the lungs. Yeah, yes, this and that. And it's called Antimonium Tartaricum. And it's else just as I said antimonium tartaricum you will find it if you put that in <clears throat> and uh, I got two vials of it those little vials that uh, homeopathic remedies mostly come or they come that way I got it in these little tiny little pellets right no problem for the children to take and uh, and they work homeopathic remedies work really really well in children why well, if they're not like mine, we're constantly on sugar right? and they don't drink caffeine and they don't smoke and they don't drink yeah, alcohol, which that interferes with homeopathic remedies. And that's why they don't work in adults if, you, if one does any of that. Right. Yes. Unless you take at least an eight hour break from it, <laughs> from any of those. So uh, that's why they work so well in children. Right. Yes. They don't have all them addictions yet. And, uh, and I gave that to her, I didn't use the, I took the inhaler, but I didn't give it to her. And I used that first and it took about two vials and she stopped. It was fine. She was fine. It took care of the problem. Wow. Amazing. Right? Yes. And then, uh, I had, when I fostered that one little boy for a year, he came with the same problem and, uh, and I gave, gave it to him stopped as within a month he was fine as well it was amazing so i'm just saying when it comes to children i don't know about adults again it might work in adults as well but in children before you put them on inhalers okay unless there is right, a real serious problem with asthma okay then uh, then try that first right yes yeah and cure it rather than just do what with an inhaler what what one does is all you do is you suppress the symptoms but the problem's not taken care of right and then suddenly the body gets used to that doesn't even do anything for it anymore right yes and you're going to be the rest of your life on an inhaler yeah yes so give that a try first go read up on it if you have a child right? yes or a grandchild definitely that well anyway or is oh yeah let's give him an inhaler well anywho so there it is antimonium tartaricum i will never forget that <laughs> might forget everything else <laughs> yeah. okay so we are in ruth for well there you go boaz marries ruth Boaz, meanwhile, had gone up to the gate and sat down, and the relative of whom he had spoken then came by. Boaz said to him, Here, my friend, come and sit down. The man came and sat down. Boaz then picked out ten of the town's elders and said, Sit down here. They sat down. Boaz then said to the man who had the right of redemption, Naomi, who has come back from the plains of Moab, is selling the piece of land that belonged to our brother. Elimelech, I thought I should tell you about this and say, acquire it in the presence of the men who are sitting here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you want to use your right of redemption, redeem it. If you do not, tell me so that I know, for I am the only person to redeem it besides yourselves, yourself, and I myself come after you. The man said, I am willing to redeem it. Boaz then said, the day you acquired the field from Naomi, you also acquire Ruth, the Moabitess, the wife of the man who has died. 
to perpetuate the dead man's name in his inheritance. The man with the right of redemption then said, I cannot use my right of redemption without jeopardizing my own inheritance, since I cannot use my right of redemption, exercise the right yourself. Oh, interesting. He does want it, but then when he finds out, he also has to take in Ruth, mm, and most likely his mother-in-law, oh, that the mother-in-law of Ruth, the, yeah, no. <laughs> then I've got people. I, I'm not just acquiring land, but I have people from that land as well that then suddenly become a part of my family. Then what about when it, the time comes to, right, for people to inherit in his family when he passes? Is he worried about that? Is he worried that Ruth might have kids with him? And then, and he's already has, maybe he's got a wife himself who goes, yeah, you better not. <laughs> I don't know, right? But it's interesting. But to begin with the land, oh, okay. But as soon as he can, well, you have to, you do know that with that land come two more people, right? And the guy's go, uh, no, go ahead and you do it. Right? Well, that's very smart. He got, huh? he got some people, right? to be witnesses to the whole thing. Yeah, very smart. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> but again, Boaz is very correct here. He's very proper about it, right? He's going about the proper way. He doesn't just take. He doesn't just, eh, yes, kind of circumvent the channels. Right? That's right. And what happens looks like, ah, oh, he's going to get what he desires. Now, in former times, it was the custom in Israel to confirm a transaction in matters of redemption or inheritance by one of the parties taking off his sandal and giving it to the other. This was how agreements were ratified in Israel. <laughs> it's your sandal. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. So when the man with the right of redemption said to Boaz, acquire it for yourself, he took off his sandal. Boaz then said to the elders and all the people there, Today you are witnesses that from Naomi I acquire everything that used to belong to Emil Elimelech and everything that used to belong to Mah Mahlon and Chilean and that I am also acquiring Ruth the Moabitess, Malon's widow, to be my wife, to perpetuate the dead man's name in his er inheritance, so that the dead man's name will not be lost among his brothers and at the gate of his town. Today you are witness to this. All the people at the gate said, We are witnesses. And the elders said, May Yahweh make the woman about to enter your family like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. Oh, blessings for children. I like that. Grow mighty in Ephrata, be renowned in Bethlehem. And though the children Yahweh will give you by this young woman, may your family be like the family of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And when they came together, Yahweh made her conceive, and she bore a son. And the, and the women said to Naomi, Blessed be Yahweh, who has not left you today without anyone to redeem you. May his name be praised in Israel. The child will be a comfort to you and the prop of your old age, for he has been born to the daughter-in-law who loves you and is more to you than seven sons. And Naomi, taking the child, held him to her breast, and she, and she it was who looked after him. Huh. And that's interesting. And the women of the neighborhood gave him a name. A son, they said, has been born to Naomi, and they called him Obed. This was the father of Jesse, the father of David. Oh, I see where the ancestry stuff comes from. Interesting. Oh, so that's why the tale is in here. 
Okay. The genealogy of David. These are the descendants of Perez. Perez fathered Hezron. Hezron fathered, Re fathered Ram. Ram fa fathered Aminadab. Aminadab fathered Nashon. Nashon fa fathered Salmon. Salmon fathered Boaz. Boaz fathered Obed. Obed fathered Jesse, and Jesse fathered David. Oh, what I also see here, so from Boaz, uh, actually really righteous, good man, sounds like, okay, uh, that's where David originated from, or, or uh, those were his, that was one of his ancestors. Oh, interesting. Well, we'll see what happens next. Uh, but it sounds like that the boy Obed was raised by his grandmother, right, and named by the people of the town. It wasn't Boaz who named him. It wasn't Ruth and Boaz who named the boy. It was the town's people who did, right? Yes? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Too bad. One would think that... Well, it doesn't say, so we don't know. I hope that Boaz, had, or, or maybe Boaz didn't have enough to do with raising that boy. Maybe if he would have, some things would have gone different later on too. But I don't know. But there you go. If you only had one boy, that was it. Well, okay. One better than none. Uh... And it sounds like Boaz didn't have any other wives or children. Not sure. Can't tell. Doesn't say. That's the end of Ruth. We're, go we're going to be in the book of Samuel. Samuel. Yeah, there was a boy that came yesterday. His name was Samuel. To the yard sale. Reminded me, of course, right away. Oh, we're going to be in the book of Samuel. <laughs> So there it is. Uh, yeah, I have to say the one that, uh, again, uh, interesting, Ruth obviously was not barren. And was able to conceive. So what happened with her first husband? Right? Two daughter-in-laws and two sons Naomi had, and neither of them had children? Again, why were they? Why did they leave? And what was going on there? Right? Yes? Okay. Anywho, so, and it sounds like that Boaz was a brother to Emmy Ellie Melek. Sounds like it. Anyway, all right, so there it is. It all ends well. Interesting tale, all kinds of things. Uh, and it reminded me of something that I saw again from some other books, scriptures, not necessarily scriptures, the New Testament, where it, I just don't understand why people need to do that. In order to put women in their place, right, they're going to have to find ways to describe what women are and how God created them actually and that Adam is the one. That God invested everything in, right? As if women were just an afterthought or something. We're the field for the men, right? Yes, and uh, and that's what we are. You know, women can't be excellent in the sense of you know. As I say it's in such. I know how it is meant when I read these kind of things from the person that they came from. Okay, I read this. I'm going, yeah, this is a lesson for men. Women absolutely were created as vessels of love in all realms. 
the principle of creation and the principles of love. And I have no problems on understanding when it, you know, that man is subject and woman is object. Right? Yes, in the ID. And in, in a conjugal relationship, for example. Right? Yes, and, uh, and that yeah, a man can only be absolutely fulfilled if he tends, tends, properly to that field of love yes yeah. uh, so that's how I understand it right but that's not how it was presented it was it was to right in the place that it was presented as right it was to downgrade because of true mother to downgrade right? the life of women right? like we have no life without men this, but, you know, again, not in the... It's true. It's absolutely true, but it goes the other way as well. Yes? I watched the uh, show alone, okay? And there are more men than women who go there. And oftentimes, the women, actually, who go there, they may have a boyfriend, they may be married, and one or two, most of them aren't, right? but they have children. And the one thing they miss more than anything is their children. Yes? The men, interestingly enough, yeah, most of them married or have a girlfriend to say, miss the relationship with their spouse. Interesting, isn't it? Yes. They're starting to realize how much the woman in their life means to them. Yes. I hope it lasts. They may go home and after two or three months, it's all back to... <laughs> So it got, kind of goes both ways. But to me, yeah, this that was a pretty long read. Yeah. Again, I, I know what it was directed towards, yeah, but I took it from the voice of the person, a man, who gave all this, gave his thoughts to all of that, according on how he received, yeah. yes, enlightenment, encouragement, studied it from God. On how he wrote that, as that, yeah, this is a good lesson for men. A good lesson for men. Mm -hmm. Treat women with the absolute reverence that they deserve, considering they carry your children. They continue your lineage. Yes. Ah, anyway, so, oh, yes, oh, that's another thing too. I saw that yesterday and I immediately wanted to go in and go, wait, 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 wait. So now, now you just, now you're taking it exactly as the person wants you to take it and then react to it. Reflect first before you react. Way to receive, right? Yes, the proper guidance from God, from spirit world, good spirit world, before, right? Yeah, you give your two cents to it or your comment to it. I went in and said, Yes, absolutely, women need to be taken care of with absolute reverence by men and otherwise we don't exist completely fulfilled either there ah. there it is that's what I have to give this morning Mm, I've got to clean my room today, and i got to clean up the art room. <laughs> it's such a mess everywhere now. Uh, two days sitting out in the chair, you know, under the awning and you know, talking to people. It was great. It was just absolutely great. I loved it. it was, I was just it was so wonderful. 
Then I took my time. Uh, the family went to visit the other grandparents, my son-in-law's parents. And uh, the little one took two presents, two of her paintings with her. One for each, I hope. Ah, I went up and I asked said my, to my son-in-law, I said, she picked a couple of presents, you know, the, that she made. You think that your parents will like it? And he's going, oh, yeah, yeah, they will. And it was uh, the reaction I got from him, right? Yes, you know, he's, he's very quiet. He's a quiet, he's very quiet. You hardly ever hear him raise his voice. I mean, I don't think I've ever heard him raise his voice. <coughs> and, uh, and, um, you know, he'll listen to whatever you have to say, but he rarely, you know, okay, yes. Yeah. And uh, his reaction, it was so rewarding. Yes, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. My parents are going to love what she brings them. Yeah. Wonderful. Hmm. Ah. Ah. I don't know how people live without acknowledging God's presence in their life. Did you hear how I said that? God's presence is always there, right? Yes, yeah. acknowledging God's presence is what we need to do. Yeah. And even with our aches and pains, yeah, when our body and our heart, this or that, it you carry it you carry it all with a sense of pride yes you, do, you just do it isn't there are these aren't things to get you down they're things to just be with right? they're just with you and if the presence of God is with you as well, you carry, you just, you carry it. With a sense of ease as well. That's the best I can explain it. I'm hurting from head to toe right now. <laughs> Not too bad sitting here, but I know I'm going to have to get moving. And I will just... I said, well, this is just how it is. Yeah. Yes. And uh, and I know that I'll have a couple of angels, one on either side. <laughs> we got you. We won't let you fall or this or that. They're right there with you. And God's embrace. Jesus' embrace. Yeah. Yes, as well. It's just there. And the day goes on. Done. It's just done. Yes. Yeah. And always say if the pain cannot be taken care of any other way offer it up for a child right there <sighs> where if you embrace your pain yes a child hopefully will suffer a little less yes yeah if it isn't so not going to hurt anybody else for that matter, right? Yes, why take the chance of it not being so? From what I've experienced, it is so. There, yeah, okay, that's all I have to share this morning. So, Ruth, the Moabitess is, is an ancestor of supposedly, it's just a tale of uh, David, King David, eventually. And again, interestingly enough, uh, are, is anybody following? Yeah, so the tale is nice to say, but yeah, are they following God's guidance? As far as I know, from what we've heard, though, again, is that was that true? God said, uh, no, I don't want you to mingle with the outsiders, right? I 
don't want you to marry off your sons to uh, or your daughters to people outside of Israel. I don't want you to do that. Yes? And he put a whole tribe in place to take care, the Levites, to take care of the Israelites. He never said anything about a king. He put a, he put always, he, he tried to find a person to communicate with, right? Yes, through the tent of meeting, right? like Moses, then Aaron, right? <clears throat> and, uh, and who else? Oh, a couple others. I can't remember their names. Jacob? No. Who was it? Joshua. And, uh, and then that just kind of, suddenly there wasn't anybody anymore. Now we're going towards the establishment of a king. Is that God's guidance? Is that what God wanted? What happened? Mm. God's idea. Where is it? It's already getting lost. Mm. I think yeah, we understand better and better why God sent us. I, our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Parent, sent us His only begotten Son. Well, there it is. That is it now. It's so dark outside. Uh, what do I do? Maybe my shirt's just all clean. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I might. Ah, oh, it's Lazy Sunday. <laughs> Sabbath day. <coughs> but I've got to get ready for those children tomorrow. <sighs> oh, okay. We'll see how the day goes. God's love and blessings. Guys, I'm going to protect you. I will talk to you all another time.